Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder guide. We have an updated Brown Fur Transmuter build. Brown Furs are pretty much the strongest spell buffers in the whole game. All thanks to two of their unique abilities. First powerful change. As early as level 3 you'll be able to enhance all of your spell buffs that grant ability bonuses by an extra plus 2, later becoming plus 4 thanks to your powerful capstone ability Transmutation Supremacy. Through this you can achieve the ultimate boost possible, for example my character here only has 14 starter strength, but ends up with 36, with a plus 10 size and plus 8 enhancement. So that's a total of 18, 8 of these points coming only from brown fur boosts. This is all thanks to the stacking nature of certain powerful buffs of different types. For example, powerful change can enhance both enlarged person for a size boost to strength, and also both strength for an enhancement bonus to strength all at the same time. Lastly, their shared transmutation ability allows you to cast personal only transmutation buffs even on allies for some very powerful buffs such as Ecolocation, Genikind, Transformation, and even all of the dragon shapeshifting spells. And speaking about dragons, this build will eventually become quite a powerful shapeshifter as well, capable of extreme physical scores in dragon forms, and a massive number of attacks per round. Plus, because of shared transmutation, you can also turn every single party member, including pets, into dragons. Talk about fun! So without further ado, let us get into our brown fur build, first with character creation. Now, by default, this build is especially made for mercenaries, because it's what a lot of viewers requested, but you can also use it for your main character, in which case you should definitely go with the Lich Mythic Path to further empower your spellcasting, most importantly spellcasting progression speed. And I already have guides for that, you can check at my channel. When it comes to race, I like humans as always. Mostly because, as a brown fur, you'll be somewhat fit starved. They do not get a free bonus fit at level 1, unlike wizards and sorcerers. But your last fit is going to be free, so you can pretty much go with any race you want. For background, two choices street urchin and pickpocket, as usual, for the bonus initiative, or. Since this is an intelligence focused character, if you want your brown fur to also have all of the lore and knowledge skills in the game, go with Oblate and Healer, as this will make both nature and religion scale based on his intelligence, just like Arcana and World. I often have skulls that can take all of the lore and knowledge skills, so I'll just go with Street Urchin and Pickpocket. For attributes, my personal preference is to focus everything on intelligence. As a mercenary, you kinda have less ability points than a main character, so I'd rather end up at 17 instead of 19. With intelligence, you'll have as many spell slots as high DC as possible as well, which can help a lot for the early game with crowd control spells. And because of the very useful Death's Consonant Bardish, eventually both your attack bonus and damage will also scale from intelligence instead of strength. So 17 intelligence, 14 strength, 12 dexterity, 14 constitution, and I would also get 12 charisma because this can grant you extra uses of your brown fur abilities. And the last point you can spend into something like wisdom, it doesn't really matter. For skill points, well, certainly use magic device, so you can also support your party with divine scrolls. And the other skills are up to you. If you want to contribute to your party with knowledge skills, then arcana and world, because you have a focus on intelligence, and also nature and religion if you went with the healer background. Otherwise, if you went with pickpocket, you can go for trickery and stealth. As far as feats, as I said, we are somewhat feat start, which is why I went with human, for the extra boost of power in the early and mid game. Certainly martial weapons proficiency at first, so you can equip most weapons. Most importantly, glaives and bardishes. Plus, a brown fur is a transmutation-focused character who is the master of buffs, so it tends to lend itself quite easily to a fighter mage playstyle. But since we also have decent intelligence, spell focus into conjuration can help a lot for the early and mid game. Thanks to the highly powerful conjuration early spells such as Grease and Glitter Dust which bypass spell resistance and pretty much trivialize most of the content at this point. Plus, as a brown fur, because you are an arcanist, we also get exploits. And the most important one for any character early on is potent magic for the plus 2 extra to the DC of your spells to ensure that Grease and Glitter Dust will hit. As far as spells, please remember that I already have a guide with the best arcane spells in the game, from buffs to debuffs to damage, everything, that you can check to the side here or in the pinned comments down below. So enlarged person is a must-have. With powerful changes, will become a plus 4 size to strength. 
Reduce person for the same purpose except for dexterity based characters. Grease is always a must have for crowd control. And besides that, mage armor, true strike, shield, and you'll get some others later on. For deity, well, any deity you want. I like Natis because it is a mage thematic god and he also allows pretty much any alignment from good to evil and neutral. If you want this character for your main character, then you 100% want to go Lich. In this case, be sure to pick a deity that lets you get evil alignments. Natis also works, but for a Lich, I would go with Ergatoba especially, because she has some neat, unique dialogue for the Lich path. For more spells at level 2, Protection from Alignment and Magic Weapon. For level 3, Meta Magic and Selective Spell. This lets you cast powerful crowd control spells such as Grease without friendly fire, and trust me, it can make chapter 1 a breeze, even some battles in chapter 2 as well. Plus, it even works for Glitter Dust later on too. Just remember, as a brown fur, you will only be able to apply this to your spells at level 4. Then you can go with Magic Missile, although it doesn't help that much. And Hurricane Bow, through the Share Transmutation ability later on, you'll be able to apply this to ranged characters that aren't rangers, like Lan and Wenduag. Abrusha Lei will be able to cast this herself already. Also at level 3, we get our powerful change ability at last, so be sure to always use it whenever casting Enlarge and Reduce Person and starting from level 4, the Animal Buffs. At level 4, increase Intelligence, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. Then for your first level 2 spells, definitely Glitter Dust. And after that, I would personally go with both Strength. As I imagine, most of your characters probably are Strength-based instead of Dexterity. But remember, as a brown fur, you can also learn spells from scrolls. So other animal buffs like Cast Grace, just use a scroll to learn them. At level 5, Greater Spell Focus and Conjuration. For a second exploit, I would pick Wooden Flash because this does give you a stacking bonus to Natural Armor class, which is rather rare. It even stacks with Bark Skin. And then False Life and Mirror Image. You can also go with Blur. Unless you have someone else that can cast it, like a Scald or Bard, which I do. At level 6 for your first level 3 spells, as always haste, you'll mostly be spamming it with all of your spell slots, it's that good. And there's also Heroism, I just have a Scald for that. Amber can cast it too. Thinking Cloud can actually help against some battles with human cultist enemies. Just remember that demons are immune to it. Gargoyles are too, I believe. Besides that, I would pick Displacement. 50% Concealment is always nice. For a level 7 feat, Meta Magic and Heightened Spell, mostly for spellbook flexibility, for even more slots of certain powerful buffs, but also to increase the difficulty class of spells like Grease and Glitter Dust, and you can apply Heightened and Selective together. Trust me, for the early and some of the mid game, you don't really need any other crowd control spells. Then, as an exploit, I like Arcane Barrier because this can grant you temporary hit points, which are always nice as another layer of defense. For more level 3 spells, Greater Magic Weapon, well, Protection from Arrows Communal can also help against certain enemies. The Vrox Spore's ability, for example, is blocked by it. It's up to you if you want this or not. As for your first level 4 spells, I wouldn't bother with Mass and Large Person because at this point, some of your melees will probably already be riding their pets. I'd rather go for Greater False Life, and also Greater Invisibility. Remember that Greater Invisibility, if the enemy does not see invisibility, is amazing for ranged characters, because they can catch the enemy flat-footed with all of their attacks. And as always, you have Heightened and Selective spell to fill this level 4 slots with some debuffs. At level 9, we get our Shared Transmutation ability at last, and then pick Outflank here, great for fighter mages. I wouldn't bother picking other level 4 spells, I suppose you can go with Animate Dead if you want some Skeleton Summons. Because we have Shared Transmutation now, I would go for Animal Aspect if you have pets that can trip, because you can then cast the Gorilla Aspect on them, which enhances their trip by a plus 4 stacking, quite a powerful bonus. Besides that, I would also go with Sense Vitals, as at this point, this spell is starting to scale quite nicely for extra sneak attack damage on every hit. Now, starting from level 10 onwards, you can actually multi-class your Brown Fur, because we somewhat already have everything we could want, both powerful change and shared transmutation. Amazingly enough, you even qualify for Dragon Disciple, although I would rather go with Eldritch Knight for the perfect fighter mage. I already have EK builds for both Nanyo and also some other characters like my Lich King, so if you want, please be sure to check them out. I would actually keep your brown fur transmuter pure, mostly because of the highly useful Transmutation Supremacy Capstone ability. While it is true that you only get this at level 20, the effect is quite powerful and stacked. First, whenever you cast a Transmutation spell, 
and all our buffs are pretty much transmutation, the duration will be automatically doubled, no matter the spell level, just like with Extend Spell, except for free. Second, and this is the most powerful effect, your powerful change bonus will increase by an extra plus two. This does matter a lot because it's not just a plus two, it's potentially a plus six over that of powerful change because of the stacky nature of some different type of bonuses. For example, it's an extra plus two size from legendary proportions, yet another plus two enhancement from the animal buffs. And lastly, you can even get more plus two as polymorph from the shape-shifting spells. So you're getting a lot of benefits from this capstone ability. Is it worth keeping your brown fur pure? Well, I imagine if you want to play with a brown fur, then you kind of want the class to have as many of its unique abilities as possible. Of course, if you have respecting enabled, you can actually play your character with, let's say, Eldritch Knight, and then just respect to pure brown fur at level 20. The choice is up to you. I'll be keeping mine pure. For your first level 5 spells, 100% animal growth if you have a party with many pets, because by the time you get this, it's a plus 10 size bonus to strength and a plus 6 to constitution. Nothing is as high as this. And then, Ecolocation. As a transmutation spell, you can apply this to allies, and it will let them bypass any concealment the enemy might have, even if the source is not illusion. Great for the enemies at the upper mid to the late game. For your level 11, 13 and 15 feats, I'd get started on the chapter defenses package. So weapon of focus and then your weapon of choice. Bardish if you're going for the death's consonant. And then honestly, starting from level 11, your exploits are kinda useless, unfortunately. I would just go with dimensional slide for now, because it does let you teleport as a move action. For more level 5 spells, I actually picked Ginikine before by mistake. It was supposed to be collocation, but anyways. The only thing to be said about Ginikind is that because of the strange nature of some buffs being applied to this extra damage, it can contribute to damage somewhat, even if the enemies will resist the elemental portion of it. You might as well pick Stone Skin Communal, it's just that I prefer to leave that to Camellia. But there aren't that many other powerful level 5 buffs. Because you are an intelligent focused character, we eventually start getting bonus skill points, you can leave them anywhere you want, like Athletics, since you can achieve high strength. And this can let you avoid some annoying spells like the Pit ones, and I see Prison too, I believe. Now at level 6 you actually have a lot of powerful spells to pick from, thankfully we can learn all of them from scrolls. But most importantly, the Mass Animal buffs of course, for a plus 6 enhancement to all of your party members. Dragon Kind 1, because of the shared transmutation ability you can actually turn every character in your party, including your pets, into dragons. Greater Heroism also helps, but other characters can cast it like a Skull or Bard. Transformation is also amazing for Brown Furs because you can share it with allies, and it will set their attack bonus, no matter what it was before, into high, just like a fighter, equal to their character level. This is also amazing, even if you just have pets, it's a must-have for them. While it does block spellcasting, characters that benefit from this don't really care about spellcasting anyways. And because the duration is low, even as far as your own brown fur, you won't be casting spells in battle, you'll just spread both of them outside of it instead. For a level 13 feat, Dazzling display. Any exploit you want here, I'll go with Swift Consume. For more 6 spells, the ones you didn't pick before, in my case Dragon Kind 1, Greater Dispel Magic can also help since you can cast it spontaneously to dispel some enemy buffs. For level 7 spells, Legendary Proportions is the ultimate size buff, made even stronger by Brown Force. And then Ice Body, because you can cast this on allies. It's amazing for basically any melee character, even pets, because it grants them very rare immunity to critical hits and also ability damage. For a level 15 feat, Shatter Defense is at last just in time for Frightful Aspect. Any exploit here? And then for more level 7 spells, Firebrand. If only because certain damage also procs whenever this hits the enemy, just like with Ginikind, except this affects your whole party. And then you can go for Dragonkind too if you want a more powerful dragon form for your party members. For level 8 spells, Cemento is a great self buff. It is not transmutation however, so you can't cast it on allies. And besides that, Frightful Aspect. For level 17, Improved Critical and Bardish at last. As a low base attack bonus character, unfortunately we get this super late without Lore Master. Any exploit, it doesn't really matter. The other level 8 spells are kinda poor too, besides the ultimate dragon form. As far as mind blank, we are getting the communal version at the next level. I suppose you can also go with protection from spells if you want. Now for your first level 9 spells at 18, Mind Blank Communal and Heroic Invocation, I'd rather leave them to scrolls because of how long they last. And if you have the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles, you can buy pretty much an infinite amount of them. 
even as early as chapter 3, which is huge. I would go with Foresight, and as far as Fiery Body, it is an upgrade over Ice Body. For our last feat at 19, you have two choices. Improved Initiative, or if you want higher damage, Power Attack. Remember that because of the transformation buff, you can get the maximum bonus from Power Attack, and any exploit here too. For more level 9 spells, because they aren't that useful outside of mythic ones, unless you were built for DC, well, you might as well go for Heroic Invocation and Mind Blank Communal if you don't want to waste scrolls. As far as shape change, the forms that matter are the ultimate dragon ones, and Dragon Kind 3 already does that. At level 20, we get our OP capstone at last, and you can go with anything you want from our level 9 spells. Alright, now let's cover Mythic progression for our brown fur. As always, for any full spellcaster, Abundant Casting is a must-have. For Mythic level 2, I'll do something different, because this character is meant to be the ultimate buffer. I really want to get Enduring and Greater Enduring spells as early as possible. While they aren't exactly necessary, it's a big quality of life increase to have pretty much permanent buffs, so you don't have to worry about almost all of them running out. So for Mythic 3, Greater Enduring spells. Also, as a brown fur, even without being a mythic main character, just as a mercenary, you can still achieve 24 hours duration, even for one round level transmutation buffs. For mythic 4, extra mythic, and improved abundant casting for more spell slots. If you don't care for the enduring line, you can also go for ever ready here, and pick improved abundant earlier. For mythic 5, ever ready. We don't really have space for combat reflexes, so this can help. For mythic 6, Extra Mythic and Greater Abundant Casting to max out our spell uses per day, as at this point you are pretty close to level 9 spells. For Mythic 7 you have a few different choices. I want you to do something different and actually go with Master Shapeshifter. We are a transmutation focused character after all, and with this you can really get super high bonuses to your scores whenever using the dragon forms. If you don't care for it, you can go with Always a Chance, Archmage Armor for more AC, although it doesn't matter for a character that has reach and size spells. Favorite Meta Magic Selective if you enjoy it, although at this point, DC spells aren't really that useful anymore, at least for this build. And Mythic Charge if you have a Skull to provide pounds for your party. I'll be going with Master Shapeshifter for the thematics of it, plus it's a pretty useful ability for this build. For Mythic 8, Mythic Critical at last, as we can only get the normal critical kinda late. As for Mythic 9, the choice is up to you, I'll personally go with Last Stand just in case, especially for the first DLC where enemies are super stacked. As far as Mythic 10, two choices depending on what you picked as your last feat, either Mythic Improved Initiative or Mythic Power Attack, which is the one I prefer. Alright, now let's cover gear for our brown fur. For amulets, well, if you were a main character, then Velax has magnifying amulet as usual. For mercenaries, I prefer amulets that increase initiative, there really aren't any special amulets otherwise. For armor, you pretty much have to go with Aramakis because they don't interfere with arcane spellcasting. Divine Guidance can provide nice bonus to saving throws. For robes, ultimately the robe of the seven sins as usual. While the increase to DC doesn't matter that much for this build, the plus 3 to the caster level of your spells does, as this will increase your buff's duration. Most importantly, it lets you achieve 24 hours duration for the haste spell, which is a transmutation buff. When you combine the plus 3 to caster level from this, and also the arcanist increased caster level ability that you get as early as level 1. For belts, well, you don't really need belts of physical profession plus 6, because as a brown fur you can actually increase your physical scores higher than that, for plus 8 enhancement even. But early game you probably want to focus on dexterity belts, as you can already get nice strength from your own spells. Mangling Frenzy is also a nice option if you have a Skull to provide rage for your party, as the bonus damage on critical hits can be pretty fun. For the gloves, Fencer's Gift if you want extra damage, but if you'd prefer to leave these gloves for other characters, well, we don't have that many useful gloves, at least for this character. Twisted Temptation can help when it comes to debuffing the enemy. Later the gloves of Death Dealer for bonus sneak attack damage, and we have a spell for that. Or the gloves of Enduring Wizard for temporary hit points whenever you cast some powerful buffs. For boots, there really isn't anything special here. You might as well go with boots of Stampede if you increase the athletics and have a skull to provide pounds when charging. Otherwise, something like the boots of Magical World. Like I said, they aren't that useful for our build. For headbands, intelligence at first, later mental perfection, because you do get bonuses from both high intelligence for spells and also high charisma to increase the number of uses per day you have of your consumed spells abilities, which feeds directly into more uses of shared transmutation and powerful change. 
Just remember that you can increase it further through spells too, like plus 8 from Fox Cunning. For the glasses slot, well, the Goggles of Piercing Gaze are the best. For Cloaks, as usual, Cloaks of Resistance with the highest modifier to get decent saving throws. For Rings, the Ring of Evasion. And lastly, if you want more damage to your two-handed brown fur, the Ring of Imminent Demise, which won't really matter if you are using the shape-shifting forms. Oh, speaking about shape-shifting, the Lizard Tail Belt can also help with that, if you prefer to fight in dragon forms. For braces, pretty much the braces of armor with the highest modifier possible. Now let's cover weapons and quick slots. As far as weapons, well, Death's Consonant is the best for any intelligence-focused build. And for before chapter 3, which is when you get this, you can go with any Bardish or Glaive you find. There's a lot of them in the early game. While eventually you can achieve higher strength than intelligence, this is pretty much endgame only, so the Death's Consonant Bardish will last you for a very long time. For a unique weapon, you also have the Scimitar of Wind, with the very rare property of increasing your transmutation caster level by plus 1. This works as another way of getting 24 hours duration on your haste spell, and other one round level transmutations before the late game, as you can combine the Scimitar of Wind with the headband of reshaping for yet another caster level to transmutation. Now as far as quick slots, lesser extend and normal extend meta magic rods to increase the duration of your buffs, especially early game, as you can get multiple lesser extend rods. A greater persistent meta magic rod can help if you want to use crowd control spells for the mid to the late game, the Dragon Familiar Jarsigax for extra damage, and of course, any important divine scroll such as Mass Heal, as we do have enough ranks in Use Magic device to properly cast them. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my updated Brown Fur Transmuter Guide. If you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member, as your support is highly appreciated. Thank you for watching, and see you next time!